Today I'm going to show you how to use Gemini 1.5 with its 1 million token limit and do it absolutely for free. We're going to be testing it with my entire Roots of Creation series to see how well it understands and comprehends the content of this series. Let's get into it. So the way to do this, at least for now, is to come over here to Google DeepMind's webpage, which is located at deepmind.google.com slash technology slash Gemini, which I will link down below. And then what you wanna do is scroll down here to where it says Gemini 1.5 and say, try Gemini 1.5. And it'll bring you to this AI studio. And I've already logged in, but if you haven't, if this is your first time, then you'll have to log in with your Google account and then you'll be able to get started. Now I've already done a, a bunch of testing here, so you'll be able to see a little bit of what I've done. I started, of course, by taking a, my entire Roots of Creation series, uh, which is eight books, as I showed you over here, plus a novella, and basically put the entire thing in here and asked it to, basically I said, given the attached books, write a thorough character profile for the character of Jack using the following template. I gave it a big template that I use for my character profiles and it spat out this whole thing. And it actually did a good job. It was pulling in bits of information from all over the story. It got her description correct. At some points it was like, for instance, this, these distinguishing marks, Gifter brand on her left hand, healing strength, flame dancing, and thunder brand brands on her right arm, and over a thousand anti void brands covering her back. This is kind of more towards the end of the series. At the very beginning of the series, she only has the gifter brand on her left hand, so it's not necessarily able to differentiate things like that. It kind of takes it all as one, but I can't really blame it for that. I, I don't think any other AI would have done much better. It got her psychological profile spot on here. Jack is an introvert who draws strength from being alone, but also values close friendships with those she trusts, things like that. And it does differentiate between the start and the end of the story in some places. For instance, here it says at the start of the story, Jack wants to learn about brands and becomes a gifter. And then here, I love this section on history. It basically, give, each line here is a very important event in her life and they come from all over the books. Like for instance, this one, Jack created Illidar, a new planet for humans and Faye to live in peace, happens in book five out of eight. So it was able to pull that from the middle of all of those books, which is impressive. Then I asked it to make a complete and exhaustive list of every single character in the series. And it actually did a really good job here as well. It pretty much named every single named character inside of the series. I'm sure there are probably a few more, but just from my own recollection, I can't remember any other named characters other than the ones that we have here. And it conveniently grouped them into main characters, Drac, we've got Jack, Seth, Name, and Skellic, and that is spot on. They, they definitely, I would say, are the main characters. Skellic maybe is more of a secondary character, but she does have a big role. And then we have this list of secondary characters, which is all really good. The minor characters, some of these minor characters I feel like could belong under secondary characters, but for the most part, this is accurate. And then antagonists, we have Kane, Queen Telma, and the Royal Priest, and Vander. I liked this one. Initially an ally, he later turns against Jack and the humans. He is killed by Gerwert. That happens in like one chapter in book six. And so I'm really impressed that it was able to get that just from that one little chapter very, very good at retrieving information here. And then I said, now look for any and all references to time passing and create a comprehensive timeline of the events of the series. And this one, it didn't do quite so well. It got some of the dates wrong. It made assumptions about how much time had passed where it actually haven't. For instance, uh, here, it got this part right. Jack is born to Rail and Carlona at this date. Uh, but then it says fall of the same year demons attack Riverbrook when in fact this is 16 years later so so it definitely didn't get that right and it's grouping things up into year one year two year three year four year five and overall all of the events of this series take place over about two or three years so it didn't do quite so so right here I corrected it and it made some corrections but it didn't quite hit the mark there then I asked it to, to ignore the dates and make a detailed list of all major events in the series 
And it did okay with this, except I started noticing as I went through it that some of these events are out of place. So it got them right, but not in the correct order, which is interesting to me. So this might be something that I might still do on a book by book basis uh, so that we could make sure we're getting the order of all of the events correct. So not too great, I guess, at a list of events like this, but absolutely excellent for the character profiles. I'm sure it would be great for world building documents, anything that you want there, anything that you want for, say, bonus content for readers and things like that. You could easily use this to do. Now, just to touch on it, I want to make sure we talk about the settings here on the right. Uh, right now, if you want to access Gemini 1.1, you need to make sure that this is selected as Gemini 1.5, rather. Gemini 1.5 Pro. You can also select Gemini 1.0 Pro, which is, I believe, the version available in, in Gemini Advanced, or it could be the free version. I'm, my memory is failing me at the moment. If you're using 1.5, it doesn't give you control over the temperature, which is interesting. But there is this interesting safety settings where if you select this, you can actually tell it how sensitive you want it to be to things like harassment, hate speech, sexual exp uh, explicitness, and dangerous content. I, of course, because we're doing like a fantasy series here that has violence and things, but all within the context of a fantasy series, I turned all of these down. It did seem to help. And once again, for Gemini 1.5, you can't really modify things, including the top P. You can't modify that here. So you pretty much have to use the settings that they have. So the next thing I wanted to test was a prompt in Novel Crafter. If you're not familiar, you can actually in Novel Crafter come and when you go to generate prose, you can basically go here and say preview final prompt and then copy the ex entire prompt exactly as it is here into your clipboard. And then you go over here and you can paste it into any chat tool that you like as long as it can handle it. So if I came here and pasted it in to this to, to test it, and it went ahead and continued to write the entire beat, which I was really impressed with. However, as far as the quality of the prose from this beat, unfortunately, I was pretty disappointed. It was right on par with GPT-4 in terms of quality of the prose, far behind the Claude 3 family of models. And to test this to make sure that there wasn't an easy way to get it to, you know, write in my style, I did another prompt, and in this prompt, I gave it my in, an entire book. I gave it the first book in my Roots of Creation series, and then told it, note that the attached file is an example of my writing style. Please write in a similar style. And it did maybe marginally better, but overall definitely had a lot of those chat GPT-isms that I've come to hate, <laughs> and that definitely don't reflect my own writing. So... Still not great on the actual style of the prose here, but overall not too bad in other areas of use, particularly for being able to identify things within your manuscript. Interestingly enough, it looks like within the Google AI Studio, you can actually fine tune models. So I created one that I fine tuned using the same data set that I had done to create a fine tuned model with Gemini, with GPT 3.5. And you might be wondering how the results of that turned out. And they were they were definitely better, definitely more in my style. But I'm seeing a lot of the same sort of hallucinations that I see with the 3.5 model. And overall, I would say it wasn't a marginal or large improvement over the 3.5 fine tunes that I have, which tend to be a little bit finicky now and then. And overall, I found the quality of the pros, even with the fine tune, to be not as good as with what I could get with Claude 3. So all of that to say, this was a very eye-opening experience, and I'm definitely going to be using Gemini 1.5 for instances where I want it to summarize characters or events or a world building elements from an entire series. That said, I'm not planning on using it for anything that requires prose or written text that I, I want to use it for. It's not really good at that, at least not any better than what you can get with ChatGPT, which uh, I've got a video coming out soon about why you maybe don't want to use ChatGPT and why the Claude family is largely superior. So I'm going to continue to use my combination of fine-tuned models and the Claude 3 family to write most of my prose 
but Gemini 1.5 is absolutely incredible for analyzing large groups of text and actually being able to remember most of the events of what happens in that text. So definitely give it a look and I'll see you in the next video.